Good morning. Thank you. Yeah, good morning. How are you? <laughs> good afternoon for you. Thank you. Uh, uh, actually, this is so. It's kind of like late afternoon or early. <laughs> It's like right in between afternoon and evening, five o'clock for me. So it depends on who you ask, I guess. <laughs> oh. Uh, I can't remember how, how many people I usually have for my five o'clock Sunday class. I think last time Christoph showed up, but it's pretty late for him. We'll see if he shows up. It's sad. I have some regulars. I have just a few people that I know that come to my classes. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> and then there he is. <laughs> ah. Hello. How are you? Christoph? Speak of the devil. <laughs> yes. Have you heard that expression? Yes. Uh -huh. Speak of the devil. Yes. How's your weekend? What, is it, what does it mean? We have oh. similar, but uh, speaking about uh, wolves. Oh, uh, really? About wolves? The wolf? Yes. Really? Yeah, it just means uh, if, like, it, like for instance, Chich and I were talking about how I always have the same people in my class. And I'm like, yeah, I, sometimes Krzysztof comes to my 5 o'clock Sunday class. Like, I know, and, but it's a little late for him. And then you came. So we were talking about Krzysztof, and then that's when I would say, up, oh, speak of the devil. It was like, oh, we were just talking about you. It's another way to say, we were just talking about you. Uh, but it's like a teasing, kind of like a teasing thing, because Krzysztof is not the devil. <laughs> At least I don't think he is. Although he does. Oh no! Oh no! He does keep a gun under his pillow. <laughs> <laughs> so you never know. Uh, oh yeah. So um. Uh, yeah, I was asking Christoph how your weekend was. How was your weekend? I'm pretty good. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. Um, uh, nothing problem. <laughs> nothing, nothing interesting. What, Cheche? Anything interesting happened? To you? <laughs> nothing. You guys leave. Movies, interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. This movie is interesting for me. <laughs> movies. You guys lead very exciting lives. I see. I watched uh, uh, TV series Wafa recommended. Oh, really? <laughs> oh what did, yes. What did Wafa recommend? What Mind you. Yes, the direct. Oh, I've seen one episode of that. It was cute. It was cute. I I, I should watch more of it. Mind your mind your language. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've seen one episode. I thought it was really cute. So I would watch more of that. That's old, but I liked it. I mean, I like a lot of old things. Um. Cool. Uh, hello, Liliana. Hi. How, are, How you? are you? I'm great. Long time no see you. No? Mm, yeah. Yeah. Welcome back. Thank you. Um. So, how about you? How was your weekend? Uh, um. How can I say that? Um. More or less, because I had a um, a, a, a dent dentist treatment yesterday. Uh, dental in one of my uh, root canal. Oh, you're a root uh, canal. Yes, a root canal. So yesterday I and today I have to stay at home and uh, take taking care of my <laughs> of myself. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, but now I, I I can talk better than yesterday. Oh no, um, yeah. Yes, it's it's, uh, it's uh, boring. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, it's dangerous if, if I don't uh, do it. Uh -huh. Maybe if I don't do it, maybe they maybe they then just has to take take out the molar. Uh -huh. So it's, it's better to to have this treatment now. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Well, <laughs> I think I hope hopefully they're giving you some nice strong painkillers to take. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Strong drugs to make you feel better. Mm -hmm. I've never. Oh, I've heard that could be very painful. Mm, yeah. Yes. And when you have a, a a tooth uh, ache, oh, mm -hmm. uh, you, you couldn't sleep well, and uh, you uh, have a headache at the same time. Uh 
Uh, so now, now I'm happy because I don't have any any toothache anymore. Oh, so that's good. Mm. Good. Well, I'm glad you're feeling better. Thank uh, you. Yes, good. We're, we're glad to see you here. Glad to see you too. Yeah. Uh, so Cheche was saying that she's been watching movies. What are some good movies lately? What are, what's some some of the better movies we've seen lately? We should talk about that first. Mm. I don't know. I've just seen The Great Gatsby, but for me, it is not that sense. <laughs> it's about no. sentiment. It's uh, about sentiment person. It's not that sense for me. Uh huh. Never seen it or read it or anything. Nothing. Uh, that's like something that everybody reads, but I've never read it. <laughs> Yet. I might someday, of course. <laughs> uh, so what's some good movies? What's the best movie you've seen lately, Che Che? Uh, I don't know. I guess Argo is the best movie uh, um, this year. Yes. Mm, I like that movie. Uh, why, why do you like it? Because it's not just about talking about politics, talking about everything. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm yeah. Yeah. Uh yeah, definitely. Yeah, I enjoyed that movie too. I liked it a lot. Um what about you, Christoph? Have you seen any good movies lately? Mm, I have seen Red Two. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, you've been wanting, you've been talking about that. And and was did you like it? Yes. It was as good as the Red first. Uh huh. Awesome. Uh, and so tell me a little bit about it because I don't know anything about these movies. <laughs> uh, it's action movie. Mm -hmm. It's uh, uh, acronym uh, Retired uh, and Dangered. <laughs> so it's Red. <laughs> oh, okay. So Red. Ah, uh, yeah. We're going to work on your aval. So it's Red. Yeah, Red to R A D. Or yes, uh, uh, red. red. Uh, yeah. Oh, it is red. Retired. What is? Oh, wait. What does it stand for? Retired. When the danger. End danger. I don't know. End. <laughs> like retired danger. Okay. Yeah. I just don't understand how that fits in RAD. But anyway. Uh, so is it? Is it like a? Is it a comedy too? Yes, it's uh, like comedy too. Uh, it's a retired uh, CIA agent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't do want to work more. <laughs> so. Yes, I've seen but, that movie. <laughs> yes. You've seen that. Yes. And uh, but uh, they don't want to let him uh, to be retired. Uh huh. <laughs> because he's why? Because he's good or what? Uh, no, no. Uh, you know, they want to uh, have them uh, on eye. Uh -huh. They don't like to have you know uh, free agent. <laughs> So they want to keep an eye. Is that you want to use the phrase? They want to keep an eye on him. Is that what you mean? Yeah. So they want to keep an eye. Yeah. Uh, our um, grammar skill today is phrasal verbs, and I suppose to keep an eye on something, I suppose that's a very long phrasal verb. That's a usually phrasal verbs are like two letters, but to keep an eye on. That's like a four-word phrasal verb, right? I'm a, that's a phrasal verb. So. He kept. What are you doing? I'm keeping an eye on my father, or I, I kept an eye on my car, or that's a yeah, that's a, like a very long phrasal verb. So there's a good phrasal verb for today to keep an eye on something. It means to watch closely. Like I don't trust that guy over there. Let's keep an eye on him. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Like to, to watch out. To watch out for something. Mm -hmm. uh, to keep an eye on. On you get a, it's like focusing on one thing, you know, like hmm you, know, you you work at a store and then a, somebody walks in that looks suspicious, 
and say, oh, look at that guy. Let's, let's try to keep an eye on him. I don't know. Keep an eye on him. Or you can also be uh, just to, 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 to uh, regard or to um, kind of survey, you know, to keep surveillance on someone, is to keep an eye on someone. Okay, what is the difference between watch out and keep an eye on someone? Watch out and keep an eye are, are a little different. To watch out means uh, look out, watch out means like uh, be careful. Mm. So look, you know, keep, keep an eye on everything. Uh, be careful, watch out. There's a the 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 floor is wet. Watch out. Mm -hmm. But to keep an eye on your, you can also keep an eye on a thing. Like keep an eye on your wallet while you're mm -hmm. traveling because you don't want to get stolen. Keep an eye on your on your mm -hmm. on your possession, your personal stuff. So they mean two different things. Yeah, yeah. those are good phrasal verbs. So to watch out. Because so I remember, out. I remember one song, one stings song. I think I'll I'll be watching you. Yeah, but it's different, no? <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, that's a different thing. I'll be watching. Mm -hmm. And watch out yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Watch out for yourself. You got to look out for yourself. So watch out and look out are pretty much uh, synonyms. Uh, mm -hmm. syn synonym phrasal verbs. Watch out. Like yeah, someone's gonna fall off a cliff. Fall mm -hmm. off the mountain. Hey, watch out! Or hey, mm -hmm. look out! You can say you can yell either thing, and they mean the same thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So those are some good phrasal verbs to start with. Uh, okay. Well, that looks. I, I like. I like some action movies, and I like some comedy movies. And action comedy movies can be very funny. So mm -hmm. yeah, I might mm -hmm. have to watch that. I'll keep an eye out to see if it comes on Netflix. Um, so, have you seen Red or Red Two? Me. No, red too. No, red, yes. No, but Cheche said she saw it. Yes, I've seen Red. Is uh, the movie is about the uh, old old CIA agent, right? Yes, they're it's, really uh, old and with Bruce old Willis. And... Mm. Yes, Bruce Willis. <laughs> yes, of course, Christoph's favorite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That story, that story is funny, but. I don't know, <laughs> but for me, rom for romantic movie, I think One Day is the best for recently. But it's in 2011 actually. One, one day, you know. One, one day. day. One day. Yes. I don't know that movie. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen. It. Oh. Who's in it? Well. I'm Mm, and uh, Hathaway, I forget yeah, that yeah. the actress. And yeah. yes. Mm. No, I don't know about that. And the actor, I forget the name of actor. But yes, I like it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I don't, I don't really like romantic movies actually because so many sentiment person, <laughs> not not really logic. They they fall in love and happy ending or something <laughs> like that. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, but actually, I like romantic movies with sad endings, and one day is sad endings actually. Uh huh. Oh, okay. Yeah, I like some. Yeah, romantic movies or ro or ro uh, or yeah, ro yeah, romantic movies or romantic comedies or romance movies. Yeah. A lot of them aren't very good, but there are some good ones. Um. Uh, actually, to fall in love. Yeah, The Great Gatsby is. The Great Gatsby is a uh, romantic movie, actually. Yes, mm -hmm. that is not that sense for me. <laughs> because it, it's, it. it's too crazy. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is too. It, oh, it's just a <laughs> sentiment. It's impossible for me. The <laughs> the the rich man fall in love with with. <laughs> Boring. You don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> like a soap opera. How like? Like, oh, like a soap opera, <laughs> Lilia. No, I only watched one. One from Brazil. Brazil, uh -huh. and they are the best. And uh, they have um, deep, deep uh, topics. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, yes, now I'm watching one from uh, called India. And it's uh, a family who, uh, uh, an Indian man who who met a uh, Brazilian uh, women. And they fall in love, but it's a, a, a cultural shock between uh, two cultures. Mm -hmm. And uh, they show uh, 
what is the, the traditional families in India uh, always arrange their uh, the marriage for their daughters or sons for mm. their kids, and uh, it's it's, uh, it's like the the cultural shock uh, between uh, both cult cultures, and I think it's, for me it's interesting. To know yeah. about the other cultures. That would be, that sounds like it could be pretty good. I mm -hmm. think I've heard of that. Maybe you told me about it, but I think I've heard yeah, about it. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> yes. Yeah, uh, maybe. Um, uh -huh. By the way, uh, Cheche was talking to use the use the term to fall in love when she was talking about the Great Gatsby or or about mm -hmm. the other romance thing, or she was talking about romance things. And I guess to fall in love <laughs> is another phrase. Over yes. There. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I prefer uh, sometimes romantic uh, comedies than uh, action or, or violent uh, films. I don't like violent films. I don't mm. like to suffer for nothing. Yeah, me. Yeah, I don't like. Well, I don't like violent films for no reason. Um, if a film is really good and it has violence in it, um, then it's fine. But like, I don't. I'm not interested in watching a violent film for no reason. Like, if it's, mm. I, I like all kinds of movies. So it has to be really good for me to watch it if it's violent. Same with horror. I don't really like horror movies, but there are some mm -hmm. there are some good horror movies. But I don't typically <laughs> yes. like. I want to go watch a horror movie. Like I don't. I don't normally like. I feel I'm in the mood for a horror movie. I never, mm -hmm. never. <laughs> Have you seen Equilibrium? No, Equilibrium. Mm -hmm. What's that? It's uh, something like sci-fi <laughs> mm -hmm. about uh, society. Uh, they uh, force everybody to take some medicine mm -hmm. uh, to uh, strain their feelings. Mm -hmm. and they don't feel. Really? Mm -hmm. Because well, uh, feelings are, you know, feelings are uh, cause every violence. Yeah. And every. So they have to take this medicine, mm -hmm. and uh, and everything uh, you know is uh, like art mm -hmm. is forbidden. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you type the, the name of the movie, uh, Christoph, please? Equilibrium. Equ. Equilibrium. Mm -hmm. Like balance. Yes. yes, like the bar. Uh, okay. Equilibrium. Is that an American movie? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, maybe Chechi should watch that. She said she doesn't like sentimental movies. <laughs> There's no feelings in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's still feeling, but it's it still makes sense. Sometimes it's it's too sentiment. It's, <laughs> it's crazy. I understand. I understand what you're saying. Every movie has to have emotions in it. And I'm sure there's plenty in this equilibrium. But I don't like drama movies when uh, someone died about a terminal disease. I oh, know it's boring to see that. Mm. You suffer uh, as yeah. well. Yeah, it can be hard. Um, so, uh, okay, cool. I was going to actually have a totally different discussion for that, but uh, that actually turned out pretty good. I was going to talk about music. But um, that's actually, that was good. So um, my pronunciation topic today has to do with phrasal verbs and how to pronounce uh, phrasal verbs because um, it, it's a little bit different. Um, usually in English, you know, we, we, we uh, emphasize important words and kind of hide the little words. And with phrasal verbs, we tend to pronounce each word fairly emphasized. So it's not like up and down and up and down. Because uh, you, usually uh, usually a phrasal verb is made up of what? Usually made up of two things, right? What, what, how can you, how can we, how can we uh, describe a typical phrasal verb? What are the, what are the two parts? There's usually or, two. A verb um, plus preposition? Yeah, it's usually like a verb plus a preposition, typically. Now there's long ones like to fall in love, which is yeah, like verb, preposition, and noun or something. But I mean, usually, yeah, to, to, to work out or to turn off or to stand up. These are all, mm -hmm. you know, verb, these are all very common 
verb plus preposition. Uh, or you can also call it uh, verb uh, plus particle or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, so, but if you heard the way I said that, it's not stand up, because normally a preposition is a very tiny word. We don't, we don't pronounce them. We pronounce them like articles or something. They're tiny. We barely say the. We barely say a uh, or, or personal pronouns. We don't say very hot, very loudly. Uh, and same with prepositions. Uh, we usually, um, they're usually very unstressed. Um, uh, she went to the store. It's not she went to the store. She went to the store, right? But in um, phrasal verbs, uh, it changes because the phrasal verb becomes its own important word. So, um, like to turn off the TV, it's to it's it's a turn off the TV. It's not the turn off the TV, or turn off the TV. It's turn off the TV, and it kind of lilts up the turn off the TV, and to um, stand up, not stand up, but stand up. So um, there's kind of a they're both they're both big words, and they, they kind of it kind of rises in tone a little bit. So um, can you stand it down? Yeah, actually, I've heard that before. I've heard stand down. It's very I mean, stand up is way more common because it's really a common thing. Stand down has a totally different meaning, though. To stand down, um, basically, it's like kind of when you're talking about a fight. Um, hmm. Uh, well, not always a fight. I'm just looking at different descriptions here. Um, yeah, it's like stand down as to like. Um, you can resign from a, to withdraw. So like I think if you like stand down, like to me when I when I think of it, it's like if there's a two people fighting and the and then the guy that gives up and like puts his gun away, uh, kind of surrenders. It's like stand down. Um, to me, that's what it means. Um, but I'm also looking at some other definitions, and it's like you can resign uh, from a post or position. So like he stood down as the CEO of the company. Uh, also can mean something about like to, to relax or to be on like standby. So standby too, there's standby. Um, uh, but that's usually connected into one word, standby is one word. So uh, when you say you can resign a position, it's uh, when you uh, give up a mm -hmm. job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and that's how we pronounce it too, to give up. Uh, so actually give up and stand down are mm -hmm. similar. But that and good pronunciation though, to give up. Um, Say the down is uh, phrasal. Yeah, so that's kind of like the opposite of stand up. <laughs> yes. Sit down, stand up. Two of the most common phrasal verbs in English. Mm -hmm. I say those words probably every day. Probably every day. Both those, both of those verbs. Um, so. Um, Maybe uh, hey Cheche, you wanna you wanna give us you wanna tell us a sentence any sentence using any phrasal verb you want. I know you know a bunch. Hey, stay tuned to MTV Music Awards. <laughs> <laughs> hey, stay tuned to Kalingo and learn English. <laughs> stay tuned. Yeah. Good. All right. Do people still say stay tuned? Maybe they do. Stay tuned. What, what, we'll is, right. a, what is a stay tuned? To, to stay tuned is an old phrasal verb, but it's still used. I guess still used a lot. Yes, I heard them a lot. You hear that a lot? Stay tuned. Yeah. No. Yeah. Who can who can explain uh, who can explain what that means to stay tuned? Mm. Stay around. <laughs> yeah, stick around, stay around. Don't go away. Yeah. Funny, all three of my, all three of our definitions all include other phrasal verbs. <laughs> stick around, stay around, go away. Those are all phrasal verbs mm -hmm. used to explain what "stay tuned" means. Mm -hmm. um, the history of "stay tuned." The reason it's "stay tuned." Ah, props. Don't worry, I'm not gonna bring up my lobster this time. <laughs> But so like pretend pretend that this is a radio. It's not. 
mm -hmm. something something else. But so in a radio, dusty. So like mm -hmm. if you were listening to a program on the radio, mm -hmm. um, if you guys remember what radios are. Uh, they used to used to have to um, tune the, to the channel that you wanted to listen to, and mm -hmm. so like, oh, I want to listen to this radio program. My favorite, uh, listen to some radio drama. It's before there was TV even, and you tune the channel to the right station to listen to your favorite program. Uh, and of course, there was still advertisements back then, and so they'd <laughs> go to the advertisement. Now here's some words from our sponsors, uh, but please stay tuned because the, the finale of our program will be coming and you won't want to miss it. So stay tuned. Stay tuned to this channel. Don't change mm -hmm. the don't change the channel. Stay tuned. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's where that comes yes, from. Yes, and they still use them before commercials. Yeah, stay tuned. We'll be right back. Yeah, stay tuned. We'll be right back. So a lot of these words stay, uh, just um, they stay around. Like hang up. Right? Uh, these are all technological words that don't go away, even though they don't make any sense anymore. Now, if we're on the cell phone, we turn off the cell phone, turn off the call, it's hang up, right? To cut, to cut the call, it means to hang up. Don't hang up on me. It's pre now, pre now hanging up means to press off. But in the old days, do I have another? I don't have a... But yeah, you take a phone, and you, you would actually have to hang up the phone. It was on a hook. You hang it up on a, on a hook old phones yeah. did that. So it was more literal. So to, tu to stay tuned and to hang up, these you can't really do that anymore. You don't really tune anything and you don't hang anything up, but they stick around because of the language it's easier. To, yeah. Like using cord uh, for wire. Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe a cord and wire. They kind of mean similar things, I think, cord and wire. Cord and wire. I guess a cord is a wire with plastic around it, is what I think about. It. So, all right. So, um, let's talk just a little bit more about Facebook. Uh, Sorry, uh, hang, hang up. So, when you, you uh, have a, a call, when you answer a call, Mm -hmm. Or is the opposite? Hang up is when you uh, end the call. Uh, end. End the call. To hang up. It's like um, to cut off, yes? Mm -hmm, to cut the call, yeah. Um, yeah, so it's like, um, I don't want to talk to you anymore. I'm hanging up on you. Bye. Mm -hmm. Or don't hang up on me. I, I have to tell you one more thing. Don't hang up. Mm -hmm. okay. Very common. I, I hold on. It's, uh, wait for a second. Like, yeah, that's hold another, on. yeah, another telephone... Uh, Phrasal verb. Oh, hold on a second. I gotta, I gotta find a pencil so I can write this down. Hold on. Mm -hmm. uh, I say that. I probably say that a lot in class. Hold on. I'm. Hold on. My computer is being slow. <laughs> you probably hear me say things like that. So let's look at what we have here for more about phrasal verbs. Um, why don't we start? Let's start with Liliana. Go with. Uh, if you can just read what okay. we have to say here. At first. You can use a phrasal verb to express an action or idea as an alternative to its more academic uh, academic equivalent. It is multi-word verb phrase construction. Verb plus preposition also call particle uh, to call off. Ah, this is the uh, the phrasal verb that I, I always remember to call off. It's, <laughs> it's different from um, to hang up, no? Yeah, it's different. Those are very different things. To call off and to hang up are very different. Mm -hmm. To find out, to discover, to pick up, pick out, to save or restore, to try out, to test, to give up, to surrender, and to come up with, to invent. If you are wondering why you need to learn or use phrasal verbs, it's simple, because native speakers use them, so use them all the time in both formal and informal situations. So to be fluent in English, you need to know phrasal verbs. No, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, OK. Um, so context, Christoph. And the best way to learn them is in context. 
the meeting was called off because not everyone will be able to attend. Please find out who can attend the next meeting. At the meeting, we need to pick out the best design proposal for our marketing campaign. Once we do that, we will try out the design picked out on a test website. But if the website has bugs or doesn't look right, we shouldn't give up. Okay. So this is kind of like, maybe this is kind of up Christoph's alley. He's, he's a programmer. So. <laughs> uh, but uh, let's see here. Uh, oh, there's one more that works. There's one more that's involved in the context. Read that last one, Christoph. Okay, we can always come up with something better. We can always come up with something better. Okay, were there any questions, by the way? This is now we're throwing in all the bold things are, of course, uh, ver phrasal verbs. Did that make sense to you in the context? Yes, uh, but, uh, but I would like to know what's the difference between call off and, and hang uh, up. Yeah. Do you cut the call in a different way, or what's the difference? Um, call off has nothing to do with calling. That's the trick. Um, to call mm. off is it to cancel. The meeting was canceled. Mm. Ah. That's why it's confusing. I, I can understand why that's confusing. Just to call mm -hmm. someone is to mm -hmm. call someone on the phone. But to call off is to cancel. Ah, um, okay. He was throwing a party, but they mm. called off the party because it was raining. Something like revoke. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Ah, it's, okay, it's tricky because you, you so put the verb to revoke. call. Yes, call off is more like revoke. Uh, revoke is more like to take back. So like I uh, I got a I, my light, driver's license was revoked because yes. of speeding. That's to take back. But to call off is a, to to cancel something. So you can can't you can revoke your. But you can cancel driving license. Right, but you yeah, and you can't revoke a meeting. So they're a little different, but it's close. It's closer than hanging up. Yeah. Uh, at least in, in American English, you can't revoke a meeting. You can revoke, uh, mm -hmm. like, um, your um, some kind of status uh, about yourself. Um, you can revoke your, I don't know, difference. Some but, uh, uh, Anthony, can I say, for example, I call, I call off a call? For example, if I, I uh, ask for an international uh, call and I say to the uh, telephone or the the people who answer me. No, I'd like to, to to call off the call, no? Um, you can say that if it's a call that you are planning to make in the future, like an important business call, like mm. if you have a conference call, like, okay, we have a, a, a telephone meeting in this afternoon. Um, all of us will call this number and we'll, we'll, have a, we'll be on the call talking about this important stuff. And then like an hour later, like, I'm sorry, I need to call off the call because I will be busy. Um, mm -hmm. But if you're already on the phone, you can't really call off the call. It doesn't yeah. work. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. So it's a little tricky. It's tricky because it uses the word call. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, good questions though. Um, uh, Cheche, second. Second, you can use phrasal verbs in different verb tense. To do so, you need to properly conjugate the verb part of the phrasal verb. He sometimes calls off the meeting when he uh, when he have few participants. Simple present. I'm calling off the meeting now. Present continues. I called off the meeting yesterday. Simple past. She will call off the meeting tomorrow morning. Simple future. I called off the meeting many times before. Present perfect. They. They had called off the meeting before you arrived. Fast perfect. Great. So now we, we learn more about call off and we reviewed mm -hmm. like a bunch of English tenses in one second. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. 
Excellent. So, uh, could, could you uh, give us the link of this document? Uh, um, actually, I don't have a link. Uh, to it. um, it's not really. A, it's like a. It's on my computer. I don't have a link. It's not online. But um, maybe I can make a document of it um, somehow and yeah. send it to you. Okay. Yeah, yeah um, Google Drive, maybe. You can, or you could print screen, or you can. This will be a. This whole video will be archived forever. <laughs> we can watch it over and over again. So there's lots of ways that you could say this. Uh, Christoph's way is a good way. You can print the screen, or you know, do a screenshot, take a picture of the screen, and, uh, and then you can save it, and you can even have it on your computer or review it every day. Or whatever. This okay. is a nice. Okay. That's a nice thing. Um, where are we here? So go. Okay. So Liliana, you can read the next one, please. Okay. Uh, third, you can sometimes put the object of the phrasal verbs between the verb and the particle. I call off the meeting. Normal use. I called the meeting of alternative use. You can do this when the noun in, in the object, the meeting, in our example, receive the action of that phrasal verb. Uh, not all phrasal verbs have an object. Do you know who is attending the meeting? No, but I will find out. Whatever you do, don't give up. This is important. Always try to learn, practice, and actively use phrasal verbs in context. If you don't use them, you won't le learn them. Yeah, try to use as many phrasal verbs as possible. We use it all the time. If you, if you ever watch, you know, movies or TV shows in English, you see a ton of phrasal verbs and a ton mm -hmm. of when I say a ton, I mean many. Uh, a ton of phrasal verbs and a ton of uh, idioms. And I say a ton of all the time. It's a normal, it's a good ex, uh, uh, hyperbole that I use. Mm -hmm. It's often used in English. We say, uh, I come over to my house and have some uh, uh, bread. I just made a ton of bread, so come over and eat <laughs> some bread. I don't know. Uh, so, um, by the way, talking about this, uh, some there's some phrasal verbs that need to be that you need to put the object in the middle, and there's some that you can do either one like this one you can do either one is okay, and then there's some where you can only use it uh, we can they have to stay together. So like for instance, to, if I tell you guys, hey you guys are great students you're doing a really good job keep up the good work, mm -hmm. keep up the good work that's a phrasal verb, but I can't say keep the good work up doesn't really flow you can't nobody says that you can't keep the good work up if someone said that to me I'm like I know what you mean but that's weird you probably don't you're probably not a native English speaker are you <laughs> so um, so there's some words you can't say so keep up the good work. Mm -hmm. all right um, this is the hard part the hard um, part of phrasal verb to know when we have to, to the particle in the middle or after the verb. Yeah, that's and that's the, that's the tricky thing with uh, phrasal verbs is in a lot of uh, English grammar rules there's like rules and tricks to remember things. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, I know there's always exceptions. Uh, with phrasal verbs, it's just a, it's just use and memorization. You just have to use it a lot and just have to get used to it because there's not really any easy way to remember it. Mm. You just, have, you just have to kind of work on it and practice it every day. Um, so we haven't even talked about what the class is about. This is an art class, and we're talking about artist Edward Hopper. And um, you may recognize some of his, I'm sure you recognize at least one of his pieces. He's got a very famous painting from the, from the 20th century that you'll recognize. But we're going to talk about a specific um, idea here. Um, there's a museum that's been showing his sketches. So in art, when you make a sketch, what does that mean? What is a sketch? Design? Yeah, it's like the sketch. It's like the design, the original idea before you do the action. Doodle. Uh, like a doodle. Yeah, mm -hmm. so Leonardo da Vinci would mm -hmm. make sketches of his inventions. He would make sketches of his sculptures or his paintings or his whatever. Uh, he was, you know, so any artist, a designer, will make sketches for their designs, for designing a logo. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the first thing you do. It's like a rough, rough draft. 
So we're gonna watch. We're gonna look at this guy's sketches. Um, just interesting article. We'll check it out. Okay, Hopper. So bad he's good. So, um, this is Edward Hopper's painting style. Do you recognize this style, by the way? Look closely. Does that look like a familiar painting style? Maybe you, if you see this, you'll recognize his, his work. But that's Edward Hopper. That's the way he paints. And if you look on the left, you see a sketch. Of, mm -hmm. So before he painted the actual picture, he drew the sketch with a pencil. And it's beautiful. It's an excellent sketch. And so this article is talking about how his sketches were sometimes better than his actual paintings. But the paintings are pretty cool, too. This is a study for Edward Hopper's Office at Night. Let's go back. Let's just see. Uh, from 1940. And he finished the painting based on it as paired in the Hopper Drawings show now at the Whitney Museum in New York. The ooing and aahing around the show seems all about Hopper's skills as a draftsman, but it, it's pretty clear that by the commercial art standards of his time, or even of ours, those skills were fair to middling. His work only be, becomes interesting when he transfers his drawings to paint, where his technique was quite simply absence. But it's that absence of quality the same absence of cultural value that we see in his, his banal office or dinner, or excuse me, or diner or other subjects that makes his paintings unique to him uh, and to his place and moment. He needs to display a level of skill that brings him closer to an American sign painter than to a French academ academician. Academician? I don't know. I've never seen that word before. Um, so, I would think it would be academic or acad academia. Um, there is, so the, the actual link to the actual exhibit you can find here at the Whitney, Whitney Museum's website. You see more of mm -hmm. his sketches. This mm -hmm. is a sketch of his most famous painting. Mm -hmm. um, does that look familiar to you? No. That's okay if it doesn't. Like scene from Cheers. Uh, yeah, it does kind of look like a scene from Cheers. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Uh, if if I typed Edward Hopper into Google, um, the first thing that will probably come up <laughs> is Edward Snowden. <laughs> yeah, not Snowden. Uh, oh, there it is. Okay, images. I see it already. Yes, here it is. See it? Familiar? Mm. So this is his most recognizable painting. Uh, very, very typical of his style. Kind of looks like commercial art. Um, but the, his use of, of light and dark um, is very dramatic. Mm -hmm. uh, really cool. Really cool colors. Very film noir. If you ever watch like 1930s, 1940s, 1950s movies. It has this kind of look, very dark, with mm -hmm. lots of it's shadows. A contrast, no? It's a contrast between light and, and dark. He, he plays, or he plays mm -hmm. with uh, light and dark all the time. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Lots of it makes it more dramatic, lots of shadow. Mm -hmm. So look at how bright it is inside, and look how dark it is. It's like nighttime, but it's very mm -hmm. bright at the cafe or, or whatever it is. Uh, yeah. So, um, anyway, I'll actually, th this is, a, you can actually see the entire, a bunch, see, here's a bunch of his sketches here. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll just send you guys the link in case you're interested. You can check it out someday. Okay. And, but I just wanted to share that with you. I thought it was kind of interesting. Okay. Yeah, Edward Snowden came up first, of course. Google is pretty cool, though. You type in something, and it's interesting to see what comes up first in your <laughs> search. See what people are searching about these days. Um, 
Okay. So, uh, what do you, uh, first of all, did, did anyone recognize that painting, the, 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 the one I said was the most famous, or is that new to you guys? No, it's new to me. Mm -hmm, yeah. Yeah. I think it might Where be is he more... from? He's American? Yeah, I think he's American. Mm -hmm. Pretty sure. His stuff, his paintings are very American, so I'm guessing so. Mm -hmm. That, that, uh, oops. Uh, that painting is pure American. And he stay is still alive? No, um, no. He he was he was he did stuff in the basically in the time when film noir was popular. That's why that stuff looks like film noir. If you know if you know if you study like movies, study mm -hmm. film, you'll know that the movies made in the United States and elsewhere uh, mm -hmm. in the 30s, 40s, and 50s had that style, had that look, mm -hmm. and lots of shadow and stuff. So that's when he painted his. Uh, 30s, 40s, or 50s. He was born in 1882 and died in 1967 in mm -hmm. New York. He's from yeah. New York. Okay, thank you. So very, and the and the artwork is very New York looking too. Uh, yeah. Any um, thoughts or questions or? In this article you just read, uh, was uh, something uh, part in? Uh, what was it again? Say that again. It was pa paired in. Paired in. Yes. Um, if that was the case, paired in would just be a verb and a preposition. I think. I don't think that would be. I'll I'd have to look at the context again. But it's a serious sentence. Yeah, as paired in the. Okay. As as paired in. Here's here's the here's the trick, and this brings me back to the pronunciation point. Listen to how I pronounce this first sentence. So, uh, whoops. This is a study for Edward Hopper's Office at Night from 1940 and the Finnish painting based on it, as paired in the Hopper drawings shown now at the Whitney Museum in New York. As paired in the Hopper drawings, right? So we know from my pronunciation that this is simply a verb with a preposition after it. If it was a, a phrasal verb, it sounded like as paired in, Mm -hmm. that, yeah, so that's that's why the pronunciation point I talked about earlier is so important. We know if the phrasal verb, if it's one unit, by the way we say it, by the uh, intonation. Mm -hmm. You always stress the preposition, no? Right. It's a phrasal verb. No, okay. Yeah, 99% of the time a preposition is, is unstressed. It's almost skipped over. We barely say it. Words like mm -hmm. at or to or on, you're just mm -hmm. like... We barely even mention those words. In fact, I could even, I could even re omit the words, and people would know what I'm saying because of context. And we almost do. Sometimes we just use the consonant sounds and, and barely even use the vowel because it's so small. Uh, any other thoughts, questions, comments about that article or the paintings or the sketches? Have um, have you guys been to any museums lately? I don't. Sometimes we don't go to museums very often. I know, but mm -hmm. uh, six months ago, I went to a museum in my city. Mm -hmm. uh, it's um, um, it's a photograph, a photographer, a photographer uh, mm -hmm. who uh, made. Uh, uh, yes, he takes a, a lot of uh, photos, but he, uh, he and then he uh, made some um, yes, like sketches, I think, mm -hmm. with them uh, using different techniques with uh, some uh, materials, mm -hmm. re recycled materials, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, it, it seems very interesting to me uh, because he plays with, for example, um, little boxes. Uh, of what, matches. what boxes? Um, matches, matches okay, match boxes. Box, match boxes. Uh -huh. And uh, he, 
his stick stick on the um, on the image, and uh, they play uh, with uh, um, shadows. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting. Uh -huh. I, I like the, the the materials that they that he use in his uh, work arts. Mm, it's, it's different uh, than others. Mm. Mm. Is it uh, contemporary art or is it from? It, is it older? No, I think it's a contemporary art. But it's an unknown um, artist in my country. I never heard about him. Really? Mm -hmm. But he's doing a, a great job. Cool. Um, so um, I have an art term for you if you want some art vocabulary. So if he does, uh, if his art is a combination of different media, like it's got a combination of photography and drawing and painting and sticking stuff onto the onto the uh, canvas. Um, you could call that uh, mixed media. Mixed media. Mixed media. Yeah. So if you're in a museum and you look at the little card next mm -hmm. to the thing, it might say, it'll say the the year it was made, the artist's name, and then the media. Uh, the medium, and the medium might be oil on canvas, or it might be mm, a technique. Mm -hmm. And so this one, a technique. And so this one would say mixed media because it's uh, many, many different uh, techniques in one. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. So mixed media. That's an art. Some art vocabulary. If you're inter interested in art. Uh, okay. Awesome. I have two more classes in a row coming up here. And my I'm really excited about my third class because it's going to be a games class and I want to do some quizzes. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, I, won't, I, I won't be there. <laughs> uh, I, I might be alone, who knows. But I found the coolest website with some like really fun geography and language uh, quizzes and it, I, oh, I love it. I play them all day long. Uh, so um, let's see here. We need to try to do a couple uh, assessment things before we before I let you go. So um, uh, I, I just want everyone to give me a sentence um, about anything you want. It can be any sentence, but including any kind of phrasal verb. That'll be that'll be good for you for now. So let's let's start with Liliana, and we'll go. Okay. Um, every time, uh, and it's true. Every time I get into the class, I have to turn up my volume. Because um, uh, the teacher can't hear me, <laughs> it's uh, <Yeah. laughs> having a, an audio audio problem. Yes, it is quiet. Mm -hmm. You're quieter yes. than everyone else. <laughs> and yeah. I, I turn on my computer, but I have to uh, to turn up to the maximum. Wow. My volume. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's no. I noticed that. <laughs> good. <Very> good. <laughs> Excellent. Christoph, how about what's your question? Okay. I heard some strange a voice outside, and I uh, went to see what happened, and uh, that turned out that was a cat. <laughs> Excellent. All right. And I heard like verbs, and I heard prepositions. I'm like, that's not a phrasal verb. I heard more verbs and prepositions. And then I heard uh, a phrasal verb. It turned out to be a cat. Just a cat. Uh, great. Great. Cheche? I already give you a sentence time. before. Well, it's now I'm going to try again. It's the end of the uh, Come on. Uh, <laughs> OK. <laughs> because everyone else gave me a sentence will... before, too. And <laughs> without, without trying, they accidentally use it. I will never give up to learn English. Good. Mm -hmm. I'll never give up, give up learning English. I don't think we need two in there, but yeah, I'll never give up learning English. You can use the continuous. Mm -hmm. Never give up learning English. Good. No one should ever give up learning English. It's a good, good skill to have. Yes. Great class, guys. Really good. Mm -hmm. um, I have. Uh, my next class will be fun. I don't remember what it is, but it's going to be great. And uh, and I hope to see you there. Otherwise, good night. Good and, night to uh, you. Great job. Good night. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.